If you're not familiar with animation, you might find it hard figuring out where to start from to bring your remote to life. I'm Isa, and in this video I'm gonna share some tips that are very helpful for the animation process, especially for the people who are new to this. Tip number one, reference. Reference is everything. Never start an animation with only what you have in mind, because that would be a total disaster. The mechanics behind movements are a lot more complex than what we envision. So before you even start, gather plenty of reference, the more the better. For the Thalia emote, for example, I used five different videos of her executing the same move so I could better understand how it worked. Study the movement, pay attention to the physics involved, try to reproduce it if necessary. Only then you will be ready to start. Tip number two. Animate from different perspectives. Never animate from only one viewpoint. The motion may look good from the front, but might be out of balance from the side and too exaggerated from the back. Change viewpoints. Try it from the user's perspective. Test top and bottom too. Add new windows if you have to. Make sure the animation looks good from every angle. Tip number three. Movement starts from the hip, since it's our center of gravity. I always start my animations from there. I block the whole action with only hips and feet if it is ok. And if I'm happy with the result, I start adding other controls like the spine and the arms and fingers. This is called layered method, because the animation is done each part at a time. Do not spend too much time polishing and adding a lot of detail in the blocking phase, because you'll probably have to change a lot of that later on. Tip number four. Don't always edit the same animation clip. If you want to make some big changes, just duplicate it so you still have the original one in case you don't like what you did. Duplicate as much as you need, it's better to be safe than sorry. You may end up with many clips, but that can be a good thing. You can copy the best part of each into the final animation. For the Thalia emote, I had 9 different versions of the dance. In each new version, I would add something here, polish something there, until I got the result I wanted. Tip number 5. Pay attention to arcs. Movements that follow natural arcs will create fluidity and avoid unnatural and inconsistent animation. Blender has an awesome tool to help with that called Motion Path. It can be found in the Object Data Properties for the rig. To use it, just select the control and choose the start and end frames for the clip you want and click on Calculate. It works best if you select the end controls of a chain, like hands, feet and head. You can create multiple arcs at the same time and to delete them, just click on the X next to Update All Paths. If your animation is feeling stiff and the motion isn't fluid, this tool will give you a visual cue of where the problem is. Tip number 6. Pose your bones. Hands, fingers and head usually feel stiff because they are left unposed, and some people won't even bother animating them at all. Don't be lazy. Add some movement to every bone, even if it's just a little. These kind of details will make a huge difference in the final animation and will give it a more natural feel. Tip number 7. Do not overuse keyframes. Check your graph editor and search for any unnecessary keyframes. Less will give you a better interpolation and it will make it easier to edit. Tip number 8. Reality is boring. Exaggerate. Even if you use a really good reference, copying it frame by frame, chances are the result won't be that impressive. Exaggerate arms, movement, arcs, jumps, spins. Even if you're not going for a cartoony style, make it appealing. This will give your animation that extra spark. If you want to go deeper into the animation process, I highly recommend studying the 12 principles of animation. They were introduced by Disney animators in the 1981 book 
the illusion of life, and are considered a theoretical base for all animators. Even though they were created for 2D, most of them fit 3D animation perfectly and will really help you understand the mechanics involved in motion. Hope you enjoyed this video, thanks for watching and until next time!